and then was there also some similar type coincidences around the time of the trip that the killers made in June? Yes. Um, on June 6th, I had a business trip to Gainesville, and I departed at 11 a.m. on a Friday, June 6th, which Ms. Adelson would have known about by March. So really, I take two trips out of Tallahassee in my car the, the whole spring and summer semester, and both times, Hitman tried to kill Danny Markell. Okay. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of Why Wendy Adelson is Going Down. And before I forget, please, if you could, hit that like button, comment, subscribe, do all the things uh, when the video is over or during it. That would be greatly appreciated. I've already covered when Tuto and Tato went down and murdered Dan Markell, but I haven't really gone in depth over the first trip they made to scope out Professor Markell. So let's get into it. All right. So what was the purpose of the first trip? We came on to scope them out. Okay. Were you intending to commit the murder on the first trip? It was supposed to, but um, we couldn't find them. All right. So when y'all came to do the first trip, was any money exchanged? No, he had money. Who did? Garcia. How much money did he have? He probably had, I think, from two grand or five grand. Between two and five grand? Yeah. Okay, and did you know where he got the money from? The money he got it from the people that hired him. All right, and who were that? Who was that? Did he tell you? No, he didn't tell me yet. Okay. Did he give you any money on this first trip? Excuse me? Did he give you any money for this yeah, first trip? He gave trip? a couple of hundred dollars. Okay. How many nights did you stay in Tallahassee on that first trip? Hmm. If you remember. I'll say like two nights, All two right. or three nights. Did you, where did y'all stay? In a hotel. Okay. And did you interact with a man by the name of Shadrick Nobles in the hotel? Yes, ma'am. And you said that you came here to do the murder, but you couldn't find him. What did you mean by that? Uh, we have followed him. and we um, Followed we who? Mark Hill. All right. Where did you follow him to? I followed him all the way to a daycare. Or you can't lose them. Okay. Where did you follow him? When you say you followed him to the daycare, where did you start following him? Like, uh, we had stopped by a park and we watched him come out of his house. So you <clears throat> knew where his house was located? Yes, ma'am. How did you know where Mr. Markell's house was? Garcia pointed his house to me. Okay. Was that something that was written on the paper? Yes, ma'am. All right, and you said you pulled into a park and waited for him. Where was the park? I was in the corner by a light. Can you show you what I marked as States You recognize States 47? Yes, ma'am. Is this a fair and accurate uh, aerial map depicting where you parked that day waiting for Mr. Markell to follow him or scope him out? Yes, ma'am. Judge, at this time I'd ask to introduce States 47. Any objection? Any objection? No objection. Be admitted. May I have public? You may. Mr. Rivera, does this yellow dot here indicate where you and Mr. Garcia waited? Yes, ma'am. All right. And when you had you already seen Mr. Uh, Markell's home before you parked here? Yes, ma'am. Right. And when he pulled out, did he pull out down this road right here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. When you're talking about the light, are you talking about this intersection? Yes. All right. Tell me where you followed him. If he came down this way, where did y'all go? Pulled right behind him, and he went straight. Straight down to this light? Yes, ma'am. And is that when you followed him to the area of the here? Yes, ma'am. All right. And when you say you lost him, where where, and how did you lose him? Uh, he had pulled him into the daycare. We just, by the time we made a circle, I guess he had pulled down and left. So we kept losing him. All right. And when you 
talk about following Mr. Markell to the daycare on this first trip. Who was driving when you all followed him to the daycare? Garcia. Uh, all right. Did y'all, you mentioned going by Mr. Markell's residence. Can you tell the jury exactly what kind of scoping out y'all did of Mr. Markell's residence on this trip? Just driving through to see if we see his car, to see if there was somebody on the house, but we never got to see his car. Did you ever pull around behind the, the house or go anywhere besides other than driving right in front? Yeah, we went around the house. Okay. Did you get out of the car? No, ma'am. Did Mr. Garcia get out of the car? Yes, ma'am. Tell us about that. He got off, went behind the house, tried to see if somebody was in the house. <clears throat> Who was supposed to be the shooter on this first trip? I was going to be the shooter. Did you make a suggestion to change the plan from shooting to something else? Yeah, if I know for the kids, I ain't going to shoot nobody for no kids. All right. Did When you saw Mr. Markell on the first trip, did he have his kids with him? Yes, ma'am. All right. Why didn't the murder get done on the first trip? Is it because? We lost him. Okay. Did you ever observe Mr. Markell on the first trip where he was... I guess, separated from his children? Excuse me? Did you ever see him where he was in his car or in his home and the kids were not around that first trip? No, he always had his kids. Did y'all discuss plans to, you know, I guess y'all went back to Miami, correct? After yes, the failed first trip. And did, was there any plans discussed about when to come back? No, ma'am. All right, what about between the two trips? Was there a conversation about the homicide or coming back to Tallahassee? Excuse me, what two trips? The two trips? Between the two trips. Did y'all talk about when you're going to come back or? No, when we left that first night, we left. We didn't talk about it. You did or did not? Did not. Okay. What, how did it come about that y'all came back? He ended up calling me, he said, you got to do the job. We got to finish that job. Okay. And did y'all return to Tallahassee on July 16th, 2014? Yes, ma'am. Well, that's Tato, a Latin king, a felon. We can't trust what he says, right? I don't know. Let's see. All right. Looking first at June 2nd of 2014, what did um, law enforcement find evidence of that happened that day? The first thing that we found was the rental contract um, for a rental vehicle that was ultimately driven up here. Um, with that contract, we see that it was in the name of Mr. Garcia. We see the vehicle description here on the right-hand side is a Nissan uh, Altima. And we have a, a due-in in the contract that indicates it was due back on June 5th at 8.50 p.m. Okay. Using that date and time it was due back, what time was law enforcement able to determine that it was rented? Knowing that they were 24-hour rental periods from this company, then um, it, it was logical that it was rented around 8.50 p.m., so we looked at records in that time frame. Okay, so around 8.50 p.m. on June 2nd. June 2nd. Yes. Okay, so three days before. All right, you mentioned it's a N Nissan Altima that he rented. What color was that Nissan Altima? A silver. And this is Sigfredo Garcia that's renting this vehicle? That's correct. Does Luis Rivera's name appear anywhere on this rental contract? It does not. Hmm. A silver Nissan. Remind me again, who drives a silver Nissan? Are you familiar with the statement that uh, Jeffrey Lacoste drives a silver Nissan vehicle or drove that at the time of, of this murder? No, I am familiar with that, yes. All right, so if you could walk us through the communications that we see, as you said, on like the, the, the night that the first physical act of this murder is occurring during this first trip to Tallahassee where this car is being rented. So again, to help kind of... Uh... All right, so let's see who was talking to each other the first night that Tutu and Tato go down to Dan Markell's. Visualize the calls. We can look at our subjects 
and then look at our communications. So we already mentioned uh, the 857 call um, where Mr. Adelson calls in to Ms. Bagbanawa just over a minute. We have the next call at 9.17 p.m. This was the 27 or 25 minute phone call that we talked about. And that's on while she's on the way back from Comfort to her home? That's correct. Okay. <clears throat> and so in this relatively short time frame, we're also kind of keeping track up here on this one at the top, how much kind of the, the total time of communications that we have. So again, uh, at 9.31, Wendy Adelson uh, text uh, Harvey Adelson the phone call we already talked about from Mr. Adelson to the Adelson residence for 25 minutes. Catherine Magbanawa then uh, communicating with Mr. Garcia. Mr. Garcia back to Ms. Magbanawa. Harvey Adelson calls Charlie Adelson. This is 1016 and that's a five minute phone call, a little over five minutes. Charlie Adelson calls back for a little over three minutes. Ms. Magbanawa is communicating with Mr. Garcia again, and then Mr. Adelson for another 23-minute phone call. And then text messages from um, Mr. Garcia, to, or call and then text from Mr. Garcia to Ms. Magbanawa to about an hour and 25 minutes of communication um, between our parties in this time frame. Okay. More here, 11.05, um, short calls or a 27-second call and then a four-minute phone call um, from Ms. Magbanawa to Mr. Garcia. Again, communication from Mr. Garcia back to Ms. Magbanawa. And that was the last. All right, so that was just context from the first night. Let's take a look at how many contacts they had during that entire trip, that entire first trip down. And sometime after this surveillance, surveillance of Dan Markell, did Luis Rivera's handset end up traveling back down to the Miami area? It did, yes. It, immediately after that, we can see that uh, the handset, again, just looking at the cell sites, would be consistent with traveling back down to the South Florida area that uh, afternoon and evening of June 5th of 2014. All right, did you look at the records to see what the communication, if any, was? between the different um, parties during this June trip to Tallahassee? Yes, we did. Okay, can you tell us about that? And again, just merely bracketing the period of time that the trip to Tallahassee was occurring, we can look at the communications. This is a summary of just the subjects in our investigation and um, uh, other targets. So we've eliminated all the other people they're talking to. Um, and just focused on the phone calls where they're talking to other subjects in the investigation. But we can see that there are a number of events um, from the 2nd through the 5th. Our uh, subjects, we can see, yes, Mr. Adelson uh, contacted Ms. Magbanawa 10 times in this time frame. What about Catherine Magbanawa to Charlie Adelson? Seven times. And what about Catherine Magbanawa and Sigfredo Garcia? 12 times. What about Sigfredo to Catherine Magbanawa? Five times. What about Charlie Adelson and Donna Adelson? Five times. What about Donna Adelson to Charlie Adelson? Two times. What about Wendy Adelson to Donna Adelson? Two times. What about Wendy Adelson to Harvey Adelson? One time. And what about um, contacts to uh, Wendy Adelson to the Harvey and Donna landline? We have one contact there. Okay, and what about Wendy Adelson and Charlie Adelson? We have Charlie and Harvey one time. Okay. We have Wendy and Charlie one time. Harvey and Donna one time. Miss Bagbanawa to uh, Mr. Rivera one time. And was that um, at his number he had in July of 2014 or was that an old number for him? Uh, that was an old number for him. Is that number, though, listed as Tato in her phone? It is, yes. Okay. But it wasn't working at the time of, um, or for the call detail records we have, we have his new number. That's correct. Okay. So he had a new number at the time, even though she's calling an old number and not getting in touch with him. That's correct. Gotcha. Okay. And what about Luis Rivera and Sigfrida, Sigfrida Garcia? We do see one contact between them as well. Okay. And now we have a little overview of all the contacts Wendy was making that weekend. 
But what was she doing that weekend? I wish there was some way we could figure that out. Is there some way we could know what Wendy was doing that weekend? Hmm, I wonder. I want to ask you about a meeting with Wendy at a coffee shop that occurred on June 4th, 2014. Do you recall that? I do. Uh, what happened at the coffee shop? We went to the Red Eye Coffee Shop um, to, to have coffee just to meet midday, and Miss Adelson canceled a trip that we had planned um, for July 11th to 17th to go see my parents, which was a big deal in the relationship, and she abruptly canceled it. Um, Did she offer an explanation as to why she needed to cancel the trip? Not one that made sense. She said that she feared that we would not get back in time, and she had, she emphasized, had to be back on the 18th to pick the kids up out of school, which would have been July 18th, 5 p.m., is my understanding. And I couldn't fathom why in the summer going through Atlanta you wouldn't be able to get back in time. It didn't make any sense to me. So she was worried you could be delayed and she wouldn't be able to pick the kids up. Right, and I, we had people who could babysit. It didn't make any sense at all, but that was what she said. That day was very important. All right, and so that occurred on June 4th. It did. All right, did you see her later that evening? I did. I went to the house to hang out with her and her children. And is that her residence on Aqua Ridge? Yes, ma'am. And how was she that night? This is June 4th, right? It is. Okay. Um, she was uh, a nervous wreck to the point where she was sick to her stomach. Um, asked me to get to her house as soon as possible. She was in that much uh, distress. Um, and she didn't have food poisoning or flu or anything obvious. She was just a, a nervous wreck. So I went to, the, went to her house, immediately went to the store to get her Pepto-Bismol and a couple of things from the convenience store. I, I have the credit card receipt is why I recall that so specifically. And did you have any idea why she's acting? I assume this is unusual for her. It was fairly unusual. The, 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 the degree of severity was definitely unusual. Um, but that whole week, June 4th to 9th, she was very nervous. So. And she didn't, didn't she, tell you it was because killers were in Tallahassee to kill Dan Markell, did she? No, I was stunned to later find out that there was hitmen in town at the time. Okay. So Wendy cancels a trip she had planned with Jeff, which was not for really a good reason. And then she's nervous that whole week and weekend. Hmm, that's kind of weird, right? Now, just remind me, what were Donna and Charlie doing after that first trip? June 7th of 2014. What does Donna Adelson say to Charlie Adelson that day? Uh, just waiting for Gary to come. Should be here any minute. Hope you have a good evening. Would you like the apartment the weekend of June 19th to the 22nd? I think we're going to tally. I miss the boys too much to wait till dad's birthday week to see them. Besides, we want you to spend some time here. We love you, uh, heart, mom, and dad. Okay. Now, June 7th, this would be the day after, would, the, would this be the day after Garcia and Rivera arrived back in Miami with um, a, an unsuccessful trip for them to Tallahassee where they did not accomplish the murder of Dan Markell? Yes. So this would have been the day after they got back in Miami from Tallahassee? Yes. Okay, and what's next? He responds, okay, have fun, still working on dad's B-Day present, to which Donna Adelson um, says, I know it's a tough B-Day, being 70 at all, but I know you'll come through. And then there's a thumbs up, kissy face, mom. Okay, and those messages are on the following day on June 8th, 2014? Uh, they're actually June 7th if you do the time correction. I apologize. So still on June 7th, still the day after Garcia and R Rivera arrived back in Miami. That's correct. After they were not able to kill Dan Markell. That's correct. So you're telling me if this goes in front of a grand jury or a jury for a trial, that they're not going to be like, um, wait a second, why was Wendy involved with all those conversations? And by then, by the time it's Wendy's trial, Guess what? Charlie's going to be convicted, and probably Donna's going to be convicted. So just another reason, in my opinion, why Wendy is going down. I hope you liked the video. If you comment on it, share, tell your friends, get it out there. 
greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching this latest edition of Why Wendy Adelson is Going Down. Give me two caps and a Ric Flair.